Hey there, in this video, I'm gonna give you a quick and simple tutorial on how you can use the Mayan Finance Bridge to get assets from Solana to other blockchains or vice versa. And the reason why you might want to do this, aside from actually sending your assets between different blockchains, is that by doing so, you can qualify for potentially two different airdrops. There's the Mayan Finance airdrop, and then there's the Wormhole airdrop, which is the protocol that powers the Mayan Finance Bridge. And there's been a decent amount of speculation that the wormhole airdrop could be a massive one because they raised a huge amount of capital and they have a very high valuation. And so by interacting with Mayan Finance, you will be able to potentially qualify for both of these airdrops. And this is how it works. Once you get to the Mayan Finance page, hit on the launch app button in the top right hand corner and connect your wallet. Now you'll notice that you can select which chain you want to send assets from. So if you want to send assets from Solana to one of these other blockchains, select Solana. Otherwise, you can send transactions between any of these networks that are available here. So you've got Ethereum, mainnet, you've got the Binance Smart Chain, Polygon, Avalanche, and the Arbitrum Layer 2. So once you select the network, hit Connect Wallet, and it's going to ask you to choose your wallet. I will connect my Phantom Wallet, and now we are in the system. So this is the bridge interface, and it is quite simple. On the right-hand side, you select the network that you're sending the tokens from, and on the left-hand side, you select which token you're actually sending. Then down here, you select which network you want to send it to. So let's say I want to send it to the Polygon network, which is an Ethereum EVM compatible chain. Then I select which token I want to receive on Polygon. So you actually don't even need to send and receive the same token. I could send Sol on Solana to Matic on Polygon. The next step is to select your destination wallet because since I'm changing between different blockchains, it's a completely different address. The Solana wallet address will be completely different from the Polygon wallet address. So I've got my MetaMask account here set up with my Polygon wallet address. I need to hit select destination wallet and now connect my MetaMask as well as my Phantom wallet. And now that that has connected, you can see my balance on the Solana chain and on the Polygon chain. So I should be able to select how much I want to send. And so if I choose to send 0.05 Sol, that is going to pop out on the other end as 3.5 Matic or about $3 worth. So you can see that you do take a hit. There's bridge fees for doing this. And it's actually better if you're transacting with larger amounts. And if you select to send a larger amount, the proportion that you lose to fees relative to the total value goes down. Now, if you click on the down arrow here, you can see the actual details of this bridge transaction. So it says it would take about two minutes and then it tells you exactly what the fees are. So $1.79 in relayer fees and then potentially some slippage. And actually, even if you send the same asset, so USDT from Solana to USDT on Polygon, the relayer fees are still the same, $1.78. So let's go ahead and actually confirm this transaction. I'll take the $2 hit for science just so you can see exactly how it works. So I'm sending 10 USDT on Solana to Polygon, and I'm gonna get about $8.20 on the other end. So then you hit swap, and it's gonna ask you to confirm the swap in your wallet. So Phantom is gonna pop up here, and I'll confirm this transaction. So the swap was submitted, and now it might take a minute or two to go through. And if you want to track the transaction, you can hit on the Blockchain Explorer tab, and it will show you the progress of it. So, so far, it's still on Solana, and it will take a minute or two to actually end up on Polygon. Oh, it just moved to the next stage, so it's now transferring to Polygon. Okay, so it's actually moving through the process quite quickly, and you can see that this step here goes through Wormhole. Now, while I'm waiting for this to officially go through, let's talk about the optimal strategy for maximizing your potential airdrop from both Mayan Finance and Wormhole. And what it really boils down to is transacting on the Mayan Finance bridge as often as you can, but also transacting larger volumes and potentially moving between multiple different chains. So I think if you come back at least once a month or better yet weekly until they announce their official airdrop snapshot has taken place, then that will establish a long transaction history of moving funds through the bridge. And then it's also good if you move between multiple different chains. So instead of just going Solana to Polygon and then back and forth, the next transaction I would do would probably be Polygon to Arbitrum or Avalanche or Binance Smart Chain. I would skip the Ethereum mainnet, to be honest, because that will be 
way more expensive to transact on. But the other five networks here all have relatively low transaction fees, and so you're much better off transacting on them. And the final thing, of course, is if you're moving higher amounts of money through the bridge, that could be an airdrop qualifier or multiplier. So doing transactions like the one I just did for $10 is not worth nearly as much as if I'm moving $100 per transaction or even $1,000 per transaction. And so the more often that you can come back, the more chains that you can hit and the more money that you can move through the bridge will probably increase the amount of an airdrop that you will get. Okay, so it looks like my transaction went through and if I open up MetaMask on the Polygon network, yep, I have my USDT exactly the amount that they said I would get. So hopefully you found this little tutorial helpful and good luck qualifying with this two birds, one stone strategy, which is honestly my favorite type of airdrop to farm because you minimize the number of transactions that you need to do to hit multiple airdrops. See you later.